Hi everyone, my name is David, as you can probably tell because it's somewhere on your screen right now, depending on whether or not the editor likes me. And I'm from the community team here at the NEAR Foundation and today we're taking a deeper dive into this month's theme of social good. We're joined by some wonderful builders, entrepreneurs, and I suspect philanthropists uh, here today from the NIA and the wider crypto ecosystem. So before we kick it off, guys, can we take a quick moment to, to go around the room and introduce ourselves and, and the projects that we're representing here today? I'm Candice Amori. I uh, started On Deck Climate Tech, which is a network of right now 650 plus people throughout the entire climate ecosystem throughout the world. Uh, a lot of people interested in, in crypto as well and working in crypto. And then I've been investing and advising in climate tech companies as well. Awesome. Fred, do you want to jump in next? Sure. Hello, everyone. I'm Fred, the CEO and co-founder of Open Forest Protocol, uh, which is basically a project bridging blockchain and climate for reforesting, afforesting, agroforestry, and actually linked to MRV. And we'll have time to deep dive into what MRV means. Uh, first hint being measurement, reporting, and verification of data. Perfect. Thank you. Emiliano, do you want to jump in? Sure. Hi, everyone. Pleasure to be here. Uh, Emiliano, co-founder, CEO from Raiz. We are a vertical farming startup um, building um, a more decentralized food network and bridging also the, the digital and physical world via impact organization, but also just creating digital assets out of the farms that we're deploying uh, initially in Lisbon and, and aiming to, to reach worldwide. Amazing. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. So so let's kick it off with the questions, right? I think I think social good, which is is something that you're all representing right now, it's it's not a novel concept, but leveraging the blockchain to enable it probably is. So how do you think that blockchain and crypto and the world of Web3 uh, can enable the world to take social good and responsibility to the next level? The uh, most interesting ways that blockchain enables social good in climate specifically is actually an MRV, which Fred is talking about, and in transparency um, and in finance. And so I think those are the three areas that I would say are most interesting uh, places that blockchain really does has, have a huge impact and have a huge potential for impact, I believe, in the coming years. Yeah, perfectly aligned with that. Uh, I would actually add that what we, what we build, uh, and Milano is also building something like that, it's, it's something that is completely new in the approach because of the Web3 approach, basically giving the opportunity for people to onboard something they were not able to onboard before. That's kind of a huge game changer. Uh, if you think about uh, specifically our projects, uh, there is no way today those projects could actually use an MRV system, being transparent, being visible, uh, and eventually, you know, having potential to gather more funding and scale so that's a huge game changer for lots of people even though they don't know it yet now i would say three key things uh, scalability finance and traceability so on on our perspective we we see blockchain unlocking plenty of potential for scaling up our, our vertical farms right and uh, also tracing our impact from seed to to harvest right so we can have on-chain uh, data that uh, of our real life operations and actually um, yeah, fractionalize ownership of a new food system, uh, allowing more people, empowering more communities to deploy their own farms. Um, and I think blockchain and crypto as a whole, it's also a great mechanism to align incentives, both um, economically and, and, and beyond that, but allowing incentives to be aligned and just distributing value in a more secure and efficient manner, which eventually uh, leads to a more efficient climate action. Yeah, and I, I wanted to just jump in because I really like, Emiliano, how you said that. I think one of the core pieces that I've seen is how uh, blockchain can actually leverage community, right? Especially with transparency, again, with finance. Um, and I think it unlocks the collective wisdom and the collective power that we have in a way that is a lot harder to do without blockchain. Awesome answers, guys. Yeah, I appreciate it. I appreciate the insight, especially on the community side of things. I completely agree. Um, but for those of you that are, that are building on Nia, why did you choose Nia as the platform to build your social good project on? Because there are a ton of layer ones out there. Yeah, I think on our side, it really comes down to the potential with Nia to make a product that is accessible for people 
not even knowing they are in a Web3 environment. Um, they, will, they will eventually learn along the way that they are in a Web3 environment, that there is a wallet, that they can, what they can do with this wallet. But in the first place, the onboarding process is, you know, put your email address in there, uh, streamline with actually accessing the platform, and then they are in a Web3 environment with a Web3 kind of back-end process for them to use. Uh, I think that's super important. It's not the only feature. Of course, the, um, the proof-of-stake approach, uh, climate-neutral blockchain, um, the fact that we can you know, pay costs in the back-end also for those projects, all of those small details that are super important are essential. But I would say the first piece is really the onboarding process. Yeah, I would second that. Um, but on, on, on our side, it was uh, both uh, choice and, and chance. Um, a big aspect of, of near and touching back in communities is how active the, the, the ecosystem is. And especially in Lisbon, like with the regional nodes uh, and us being a startup uh, born in Lisbon, there was this big community here in the city that uh, actually um, just made this partnership very natural. Um, us launching our concept farm at Arroz Studios was also a, a, a key point for um, integrating with Nier. So that's, that's, I think, the key. Just, of course, backed by the fact that uh, Nier is a climate neutral blockchain, backed by, by South Pole, and it fully aligns with our vision. And topping it off with a great onboarding process and the usability, it was just a perfect match, right? So I would say it's community, uh, the fact that it's easy, easy to use, and also the, the presence, the physical presence uh, aligned with, with what we're building. I think a lot of industries around the world are driven by you know, capitalism and this notion of making as much money as you can, as fast as you possibly can. But with projects like yours and the ones that you guys are involved in, there seems to be a more altruistic driver behind them, um, for lack of a better word. So are there any words of inspiration that you can give to future builders of social good projects like these? I think taking a step back, when we think about capitalism today, we kind of have a perverted capitalism where it can be, if you think about it, socialism for the richest and, and that like smallest percentage of people where we'll, uh, you know, uh, rescue them <laughs> if anything goes wrong or we'll, we'll mostly focus on the economic markets and, and how to, you know, essentially have trickle down, but it, it stays at the top. And so, I think thinking about capitalism and making as much money as possible um, today uh, versus what it could look like tomorrow is um, personally what really inspires me thinking about these projects, right? And thinking about the collective action and, and the possibilities here. So thinking about a less perverted capitalism actually and, and not accepting that, you know, the way that it works today is the way that it should work or the way that it will work tomorrow. And that essentially it's something that's created by humans, right? It's the economic system is created by humans. It can be changed by humans. And so I hope that that's a source of inspiration for others to think about how do you want this world to look and what do you want capitalism and the economic systems that we live in to look like? And what role do you want to play in that world? I would add to that, that in my perspective, it's, it's kind of, if you, if you think of how people were trying to make money in those kind of environments like the sustainable climate place industry um it's been really and in most industries it's been really two words not talking to each other you know, pe people making money on one side and the rest of the world on the other side trying to survive sometimes and uh, i think web3 has the power of a renaissance in a, in, a, in a way that it will be maybe empower the, the poorest uh and eventually the question i would ask like to ask here is why can't we actually think of a system where those people there will make better money than the the people on the other side of the uh of the scheme today it's it's totally possible to think about this because it really depends what you value first and if we are able to shift the value from a, a purely perspective uh in a capitalism point of view how, it, how it's perceived today to a to bring value to other things, uh, social impact, nature, uh, water, climate, whatever you want to value. And if we can make that shift collectively, 
And eventually you'll make better money on that side than valuing other things. But this, this is not something that's going to happen overnight, but eventually it's, it's probably possible. Um, maybe I'm daydreaming, maybe not. I, I think it's possible to build a conscious capitalism and uh, Web3 and, and, and this technology allows us to put it into action in a more efficient manner, like leveraging uh, different different talent and community from, from around the world and uh, also accounting for the externalities that are that are like in the in the wider yeah, supply chains and value chains in, in different businesses, all the way from climate action to to SaaS or software companies, right? So uh, I believe that these tools and technologies will allow us to develop new models of, of uh, yeah, intrinsic value or distributing value in a way that accounts for those externalities and, and not only uh, yeah, avoids these negative externalities, but can achieve positive ones, right? Um, and I think, yeah, for, for people building new projects or, or working on, on existing projects, uh, it's always good to remember like climate action is, is one of the, if not the biggest financial opportunity as well, right? So of course, I hope we are all building this because we, we want to make a difference and, and uh, do the necessary changes for the climate, but it's also um, a, a solid drive uh, for, for developing new projects, right? So I would say it's a matter of keep, building, keeping to discover new opportunities. And, and uh, as Candice was saying, like, just building the world we want to see through, through this technology. Right? Perfect. I ultimately think um, that it's really, if we want to build something, it's really a matter of thinking what, uh, what you actually give value to around you. Uh, Emiliano is giving value to, you know, growing food locally. That has a huge value. Uh, we are giving value to the environment or forest specifically. Um, you know, you could think about giving value to what? To safe water, safe access to water, to, uh, you know, how you manage your, your trash or your, you know, it's, there's, there's a whole lot of things you could do if you just think about what actually matters around you, the environment around you, the people around you. Guys, thank you so much. I think, I think if we abstract it a level above just Web3, so where do you see the wider world of social good, whether that's Web 2 or Web 3 or, or you know, if, if Jack Dorsey runs his Web 5 um, in, in five years time, uh, where do you think we will be? Do you think there'll be more projects leveraging blockchain? Or do you think blockchain will become such a crucial aspect in uh, the world of social good that it will be prevalent throughout every aspect of it? Or do you think something else? So in terms of climate today, we essentially have you know, the climate industry. And then within that, we have all these different industries. And, and right now, crypto is thought of as one of those verticals, essentially, even though crypto can be, you know, this umbrella layer, it's kind of an industry within crypto or within climate. And so in my view, in three years and five years, climate is less thought of as an industry with sub-industries and more of just an entire economic shift, right? And so I think that crypto and <laughs> blockchain will have a really big part of that. And I also just think that there's going to be a shit ton of people coming into both the Web3 space, but also, uh, given my vantage point, into the climate space. And we've already seen that. And so the obvious example is Chris Saka, I think, four or five years ago. So it's been, you know, a long time in climate time. But uh, he retired and then decided to 100% shift into climate. And we're seeing way more people who are incredibly talented have had incredible careers and expertise in other spaces coming into climate and potentially coming into Web3 as well. I feel like those are two of the, the hottest spaces and people both at the, the intersection. And so uh, one, I think that it'll be an economic shift. Two, I think that we'll have a ton more talent, a ton more energy. And three, I think that we're going to spend a bit more time, especially in five years from now, uh, on later stage scaling and deploying of what we see that works. Because I feel like right now, we essentially have technology that we know works, right? There's a lot of renewable energy that works. We're scaling and deploying it with project finance. I think there's actually a really interesting uh, financial innovation play there. If anyone is working on that, would love to chat with them. And I think that there's a, a space for blockchain there. But uh, but so we're scaling and deploying that. We're also just throwing shit at the wall to see what sort of technologies will work so that later on we can scale them and see the impact that they make. 
And in five years, my guess is that we're going to want to grow the things that we've thrown against the wall and that have stuck, right? It's like the cooked spaghetti, it does stick on the wall. We know that we want to scale and deploy it. Um, so that's my vision for or where, where I imagine we'll be in five years. I think we will, we will need to uh, see some failures, obviously, because let's not forget it's still a very young industry. And try, I mean, we've been down that road. Trying to apply climate methodologies to blockchain is not that easy as, you know, the, the blockchain infrastructure is really great, but it's also really strict on how you can, you know, develop things. It's not it's not like you know building an ARP with Microsoft and you know tweaking a few things around and playing with it. It's not like that. So you have to really think about how you build things for the long term. Uh, of course, you can tweak it along the way, but I think it's really about sitting down and really building things that will last. Uh, and what I mean by that is really being meaningful about what we what you build, and maybe not and. What I see coming from outside of this crypto industry, because I was, you know, I'm a more scientific guy, uh, there's a lot of action around, which is really good. But sometimes I feel that there's a lack of, a lack of just sitting down and thinking through the long term vision, because the long term vision, obviously, in the in the space of what we're building, is essential. So aligning with, you know, what's been done in the industry in the past, uh, aligning with what is possible with crypto tools and trying to make the best out of it. Um, and obviously we'll see failures and we'll learn from that those failures, but uh, I'm extremely confident on actually using blockchain as the coordination mechanism that really lacks in the industry today. And I think I'm, I'm extremely excited to see other projects using that as a, as a tool. I see crypto and beyond crypto blockchain technology becoming more of an umbrella definitely than just a single vertical, both uh, for climate action, but also for, for other, other, other um, sectors, right? So I do believe that will help us align uh, value more, more uh, effectively along with incentives. Um, I do believe in the next five years, we'll see way more climate action, unfortunately, because it's a necessity, right? Sometimes we're not as vocal as, as we should be myself, included right it is a climate emergency even if uh, right now we don't always see it but there will be more needed action on that and, and i agree we're gonna see plenty of failures uh, some successes and uh, hopefully within the next five years or so we'll see way more scale-ups than 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 at the moment but again i i do encourage everyone to just jump on board right and and uh we, we've seen talent coming from all over different industries to work on climate so I do believe it's yeah a huge opportunity and a necessity for more projects to to start building within this refi space, right? Uh, regenerative finance, but also beyond blockchain, uh, any kind of climate action that is well thought of and and just touching what Fred said, uh, thought of for the long term is needed, and uh, hopefully we'll see much more of that. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Onto uh, onto what I think is my favorite question, actually. So we're seeing a, a growing number of projects that are building uh, on the blockchain in the crypto ecosystem that are aiming to fight climate change or make some kind of contribution toward that battle. However, can sometimes feel that the mainstream opinion is that every single NFT is boiling the ocean. Whenever you send a Bitcoin transaction, then like a school of fish die. How do you manage that general opinion right now? And do you think that it will change? I often think about climate action as uh, there being two schools of thought, right? Or two extreme schools of thought. So one is tech will save us, right? Very like techno optimist uh, that we don't have to worry about really anything social, behavioral, whatever. We will innovate our way out of this. And we really need to focus on uh, really early stage development and, uh, you know, moonshots. So that's one far end, right? The other far end that I see is uh, we need to consume a lot less. We need to uh, understand what indigenous communities have done for years and essentially, you know, scale up what indigenous communities do and sort of go maybe more to a quote unquote like traditional sort of way of living or, or a way of living that um, is less techno centric, right? 
And those are, again, very far extremes. And I think most people are somewhere in the middle. Uh, my thinking is that both sides can be true, right? Like it's a yes and where I hope that actually the future that we have that is um, super electrified and you know very climate conscious allows us to still consume the things that we need to consume, but waste a lot less. Um, gives us you know technology that is really fun and exciting and innovative, but also is very equitable and fair and does borrow from indigenous wisdom and uh, and you know isn't like super consumerist if went in in an unnecessary way. And so um, there's a, a good story from this podcast called How to Save a Planet, where this indigenous community actually figured out that by managing their forest, they could sell carbon credits, carbon credits. And maybe they did that on the blockchain, maybe not, right? And I know that there are a lot of companies coming up to sell carbon credits on the blockchain. But I thought that was just such a good story about taking uh, the traditional sort of path on this side and marrying it with a sort of techno uh, optimist or just more technological sort of world or more economic world. And so that's my long way of saying that um, I think that there will always be extremes and people who think that, you know, one way has to exist over the other way. And my view is that the closer that we can get to some sort of middle that makes sense, then uh, the better the planet will be and also just the better the public perception and opinion will be, right? Because we'll, we'll realize that we need a little bit of both. I totally agree with what you said. Uh, I think there's a huge tension today. Uh, some people are actually aware of that tension, some not, some, some don't care. But I think the tension is basically, we, we know today that we have to somehow transition to something else, to a different way of living. I'm very personally, I'm very well aware of that. It's and it's difficult. It's really difficult to actually transition and to say, okay, this is the way I've been living is not sustainable for the long term, and obviously not for you know for my kids and my grandkids. So how how do we transition to that? And there's a lot of hype around how what to do, uh, of, of course. And I think we should, you know, be careful about, about not, you know, over promising. We should be careful about not moving, even even though, you know, the web environment is really a fast-paced environment. We should really make sure that, you know, we don't build just hype. We need to build serious, <laughs> serious products, serious things that would impact the planet. And of course, uh, you mentioned, you know, the the, the Bitcoin and one of the main issues we've had to, when we talk about our projects about open forest protocol to people that don't understand crypto, the first issue is Bitcoin. No, this is not sustainable. Uh, why, why are you guys are you using blockchain? And then you basically you, you start the conversation from zero, you know, explaining what, what we do and how we use it and why it's not, uh, it's not Bitcoin we use. It's a different technology and the technology has evolved in 10 years. So it's, it's a lot of education. And I think that's also super important. So yes, this is a transition that needs to happen fast, but let's not forget that we need to educate, we need to explain what we do, we need to build good products and eventually we'll onboard more people. Because if you just build hype, telling you know, blockchain is gonna fix the climate, that's not gonna help anyone it's not, and not us for sure. So I think we have to be, yeah, uh, consistent, careful and, you know, serious about what we deliver as, as, as a message, but also as uh, with what we build. Yeah, I believe it's a, about building and, and showing by example, right? So we, we can, for example, give a plant or, or a plant NFT as, 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 as we have, right? Uh, an NFT correspondent to a plant and, and so onboard someone into the near protocol and just giving our, our particular example, right? And, and, and show them again, just touching on the education part, I think it, it's critical, right? So showing people what they can do with it uh, and then educating, right? So just coming back to it is how can we showcase what can be built and the value that can be uh, given through the blockchain, right? And make people understand that it's not necessarily the case that, that it's, uh, as Fred was saying, Bitcoin and just this uh, uh, boiling the ocean with with crypto, right? So 
I think it's about demystifying what blockchain actually is, right? And just showing tangible use cases that can actually help, right? On 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 our end, as we as we scale up, it, it, it's about distributing value and, and having, for example, uh, a share of of a farm, right? Or that people can actually have a, a positive impact with, so they can get a yield in terms of plants, but also in terms of impact. So just I think as we progress as an industry uh, in the refi space, we, we we can show more tangible aspects and make people or help people understand that it's a, it can actually be a force of good, right? And just, uh, again, uh, meeting people in the middle because of course there are things that have to be improved, right? It's not about, I believe, just painting it as, as something that it's not or something that is perfect, but just showing both sides of, of the coin and just, helping people to to make a more solid understanding and of course encouraging to apply this technology in a way that's good for the environment and for communities awesome and and bringing it back around i guess to, to your specific projects now what is the largest hurdle that each of you are facing when it comes to achieving success right now the largest hurdle is probably in that um, you said, Fred, a coordination mechanism with blockchain, and I thought that was a really good way to, to put it. I think coordinating the people who are working on the things that I am working on. So right now, it, it's I'm focused on climate finance innovation, and there's so many different players in the particular space that I'm thinking about. And so just bringing together those players to think about uh, each of our roles in and how we can you know, work together to create this uh, this future that we need is probably the, the biggest hurdle that I'm facing. Bringing people together who have different types of expertise and uh, are all in the same space is incredibly hard. I think for us, as we will be launching in a, in a few weeks, end of this month, um, the, the product development is kind of a bit behind, even though we have lots of uh, development ahead of us. I think it's more about explaining what we do and uh, we'll onboard projects. So that's a good news. You know, we've built a car, now we can invite people to sit in the car and have a ride. Um, but still uh, explaining what we do is, it seems simple when you are in it because you're building it. But actually when you try to explain that, uh, that it's an ecosystem, it's, uh, there are some tools that are Web3 oriented, but the back end is Web3 and then you have validators and then basically it's a community of people working together and no it's not a company it's a protocol and it's it's a lot for people to actually understand so especially for people that are, don't understand either climate or, or, or crypto um so i think the learning curve is quite big and I, I think the biggest challenge for us is is this communication on trying to actually simplify things so people can actually on board be, be curious about what's been built and then onboard and you know experience the um, the different projects uh, and the, and or in our case the the, the use and um, the logic of what we build. Vertical farming as an industry itself, um, at least for for the general audience, it, it is something quite new, right? I, I'm not sure how many of us uh, are are yet buying like produce uh, vertically farmed, right? So that's something that we need to also show and educate people on. While we have this Web3 angle, uh, it's something that adds a level of complexity to it. Of course, it unlocks uh, much potential, but it's also something that we need to properly, um, again, align both resources, talent, and, and uh, key stakeholders around it, right? So I would say something along those lines as well, like how do we align um, those um, incentives, mechanisms, technology, and, and at the end of the day, people towards the same vision, right? Um, so I think that alongside um, funding, right? So, so we are we just launched our, our concept farm, which, which was amazing. Um, and you're all invited to, to come to Lisbon if you, if you want to see it. Uh, and I guess we'll be here in, in NearCon. And we'll start uh, our, our first um, official institutional uh, round, right? So, so I would say that's something as well that, that uh, we will need support on. Um, and that's, I think, always a hurdle 
uh, when scaling up projects, right? So, so I would say that's something as well that, that has been a hurdle. I mean, we, we've had uh, success so far, but it's I think both on on my end as an entrepreneur, and I believe as well for for future projects launching, it's something that has to be well thought of, and and that also um, is requiring some support. So, yeah, just long story short, uh, education coordination and and financing. I guess taking another step back now, are there any unexplored areas of social goods where blockchain could play a pivotal role? And you think that it hasn't been applied there yet? This is a bit of an abstract question. The high level that I can think of is in different types of financial innovation. And so, you know, crypto is mostly thought of as right now innovating in finance. In one particular way, I think thinking through, again, how to like scale and deploy uh, or invest in climate solutions. I would love to see more innovation on that side with, with blockchain. The other area is, and sort of going a bit deeper is, um, and Fred, I want to dig into the MRV more with you at some point, but I think something that's interesting that blockchain could have a role in is if we take the MRV example, it's really different to think about uh, this measurement reporting and verification when it comes to something like kelp in an ocean, because that's an open system, versus uh, direct air capture where it's super easy to measure it, right? And there's the, the tool, like the, the DAC system can probably measure it itself. And so we need different ways to create MRV systems around that. And I imagine that there is some sort of uh, reason that blockchain could be more interesting in that space where you're thinking about all these different types of uh, different tools using different MRV, but that are in one larger system. Yeah, I can't agree more. I mean, I, I think, you know, blockchain has been super useful on, on the finance, finance aspect. And, you know, we are finding as we build something that is a bit more you know, innovative in the sense that it's not strictly speaking financially oriented. It has some component, of course, but, uh, we find that in the space, when we do need to plug into other companies, protocols, whatever, that are you know providing those finance, we find lots of people around. So there's a lot of expertise, a lot of, of different solution. Uh, I think it's really needed that people actually look at blockchain as not only the fin you know the financial mechanism that will accelerate funding of projects, but also tools for, you know, for instance, MRV, yes, it's a good example, but eventually broader MRV, as Candice was saying, it, it's a huge potential for coordination, coordinating complex processes. What I mean by that is, if you look at all the complex processes in life, especially in climate, there is a lot of uh, interaction, of course, with people, but also with institutions, companies, with nature eventually data comes from mostly comes from from nature or, or your environment um, and that requires a tool that can basically sync uh, our efforts and actually fast track streamline our efforts to understand what's around us and what kind of impact we can have together i think that's really the key i'd love to see in the future a centralized not centralized decentralized mrv kind of infrastructure uh, that can plug in different MRV systems from you know, renewable energy, oceans, uh, lots of different things, plastic, whatever you can think of. Um, it's probably still a long way down the road, but uh, yeah, that would be awesome. I just wanna quickly repeat what Fred said, the coordinating complex processes. I thought that was a really good consolidation of uh, what I was saying, not as well, but yeah, that that is a great concept. And uh, on the MRV side, I'm particularly keen on applying that, of course, to, to vertical farms, right? And, and I think that has solid potential there to, to be able to scale up and actually quantify the, the impact. Um, beyond that, I would really love to see more blockchain applications in, in developing countries, right? So uh, I think there, there's, there's a lot of uh, movement and, and developments in, in uh, yeah, uh, more developed countries and, and, and ecosystems, but, I do believe there's there's uh, 
a more pressing need and there will increasingly be so with uh, extreme weather events in, in more developing countries or less developed countries and emerging countries and economies. Um, I was very glad to see, for example, Open Forest Protocol uh, onboarding a project in Mexico. Uh, so that's where I'm originally from. And uh, I think we need to see more of that, right? And, and um, of course, in the environmental side, but I would say there's a need of more pressing action on the social side, right? So there, there's still plenty of, of uh, yeah, people suffering and not having the, uh, the ability to meet their, their most essential needs. And I do believe this uh, way of coordination and, and uh, realigning incentives and um, yeah, these new mechanisms to create and uh, assign value can really help um, people who are most in need and will be increasingly so to, to reach that, that level of, of well-being. So I think that's something that I'm not sure if, that, if it's unexplored. I'm pretty sure there's initiatives out there, but that uh, I, I do believe would be great to see more of. Emiliano, I have a question for you. Don't you think if we are somehow successful in implementing our projects, you know, in, a, yeah. in countries like Mexico or somewhere else, that people will see the potential of what we build and it will actually create some kind of a ripple effect? Uh, I'm, I'm sincerely hoping that is the case, but uh, you know, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Absolutely, no, and, that, and that's the vision, right? That's the vision as, as we were able to, to deploy this and scale up. And I think it will create that necessary ripple effect and uh, it will also make well, financial sense for, for new projects uh, all the way from reforestation and, and local food systems to, to sprinkle and, and grow, right? So definitely that's the vision. And, and I think that's uh, that we should, something that we should work towards as a collective. Thanks so much, guys. I guess, um, finally, how can the near ecosystem the wider blockchain ecosystem and the world as a whole support each and every one of you in your mission of delivering positive change. I just want to go back to the coordinating complex processes. I think that's such a great concept. And the sort of meta thing that I can think of is uh, breaking down the process for coordinating complex process, right? And, and creating whatever we whatever is an equivalent to a playbook that can then, you know, go from one sub climate industry to another sub climate industry or not climate industry to climate. I think uh, getting closer to figuring that piece out is super exciting. And that would be the biggest unlock that I see to, you know, me being able to do the positive work that I want to do and the people that I know being able to do the positive work that they want to do. So going to NIR, I think uh, NIR has a great positioning to be able to provide a set of technologies that few blockchains uh, can provide. So I think it's like really has really great tech. And, you know, you, I, I know for, you, for a fact that you guys are already thinking on, you know, making more impact in that, in that, in that place. So... Uh, I would say, you know, if you if you are a project out there, you're considering different blockchain, please consider near. Uh, I think it has a good value proposition, and uh, the team is really helpful and uh, obviously really engaged in the, uh, at least from the conversation I had, really engaged into the, uh, the the climate and sustainability as a whole. So, um, yeah, some other blockchains are a bit more at this point, a bit more focused on that, but near is really. Uh, becoming one of the player, hopefully becoming one of the player in that space. I would say in terms of support, also just keep spreading the voice, right? So also within near, I believe that there has the potential to um, become more present within the climate action space, right? So um, as, as this keeps growing, I would say uh, it's about reaching a wider audience, right? So, so how can we, I think, and the fact that we're here and, and speaking about this, it's, it's a great first step already, right? For, um, so continuing that education aspect, how can we reach more people and, and um, encourage this use of, of, of Web3 technology or, or the near protocol for 
positive climate action. So I think that that would be key as well. Um, and providing the right, again, <laughs> the coordination mechanisms for, for the complex processes, including all the way from um, designing a tokenomics uh, system to funding, to deployment, to scaling up. So I think as uh, we progress and those foundations are well thought of and uh, what we'll establish since it's still something very nascent, it's how can we align the, those efforts and promote more projects to jump on board. Yeah, on my side, I would add that there's, it's important to have kind of a, maybe not a vision, but yeah, some sort of vision of how NEO will position itself in that space for the long term. I come back to the long term again, <laughs> but it's super important. Um, I think communicating about this vision um, and of course we, we, we are a free projects building on here, but I mean, the potential is, is huge because we are, you know, Emiliano and my and, and open forest protocol, we're addressing a very niche uh, market. Eventually we'll, you know, build other verticals. We have, you know, we have potential for that, but uh, there are also other, lo lots of other projects building other things uh, on all the blockchain. And I think one of, of the key elements here is not, of course, it's what you build, but it's also how you build it. What are your values? What is your long-term vision? Um, yeah, and communicating that vision is extremely important, and especially in the in this space where climate is going to be becoming more and more high because we'll talk about it more and more. It's going to affect us, uh, you know, every year more. Well. On that note, I'd like to say a huge thank you to each and every one of our guests who joined us here today. And thanks to everybody who's tuned in. If you'd like to learn more about NIA Protocol and the surrounding ecosystem, then you can head to NIA.org or you can do one better and you can come and visit Emiliano and myself and I hope Fred and Candice at NIACON this September and check out their Raiz uh, vertical farm and you can find out a little bit more details about that on NIACON.org. Thank you so much, everyone. Oh, 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 oh,